And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet. This is the first in what I hope will be a semi-regular se semi-regular series, whether so whether solo or with groups, that I'm calling Amazing Artifice, where we look at the ver the various weapons, armor, and do and doodads th throughout get throughout games and uh, and other media and. Give, and give them their own little sheets. Consider this a sister to the old Characters with Characters series that I did beforehand. Um, this time we this time we are tackle for this inaugural entry. We are tackling the weapons and some equipment from the from Heretic One and Two and a Medieval. But I am not alone in this because with me we have coming to us straight from Open Ended Games. The ma the ma the man who wishes to make criticals hurt again, good brother Max. How you doing? How you doing, Hi. Today, man? Hi, everyone. I'm fine. Thank you, old man. Thank thank you for thank you for willing to be coming back on this cr on this crazy little adventure of mine. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So, I guess I'll st I will. Um, I will give I will give a bit of a note when it comes to my experiences with Heretic. Um, mm -hmm. Raven Software is a very good developer. They've they've aside from the fact that they are that they are the only they're the only game developer I can think of who actually perfected lightsaber combat in video game form. Um, this was one of their early entries, per, um, with John Romero overseeing it as producer. As a, and some I'd imagine some derided Heretic at first as a Doom clone. Although there are certain things that you could do in this that you couldn't do that you couldn't do in Doom or Doom Two. And for me, it for me it has one particular advantage. On higher difficulties, I don't have to deal with infinitely respawning enemies. Also, no hit scanners. You just have more. You just have more enemies. And it and at worst it turns it turns into a bullet hell game, but I can handle that. Um, Heretic Two, on the other hand, is a it's an it's an odd duck, and unfortunately because of because of a legal slap fight with Activision, you can't legally get a, get a copy of it off of Steam, even if you get the um, the Hexen bundle. It only has Heretic and Hexen One and Two. It doesn't have Heretic Two, which is a real shame. But for but for this, we are we are going to we are going to we are going to tackle um, Heretic Heretic Two and a Medieval. Like I said, um, I was tempted to put the Hexen games in here at one point, but the problem is. That's too. That's too rooted in its class system, and well, well, of course you have vocations in against the Dark Master. It's not exactly the same thing, and so no, and, no, I agree. Um, some of the classes are getting outright spells, and you already have you already have a spell system to work with, and with up uh, with others, there's what there was a bit too much overlap. Like, do I re do I really do I really need to give th to give three separate entries for for whether you're using for using um for using bare for using bare hands? No, oh, no, I perfectly agree with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, now granted, if they were using three different martial arts styles, I could see going going with three different entries, but that's not the case here. Oh. Um. So I'll start. With, I'll start with now. When it comes to the, when it comes to the um, the st the staff that you get at the that you get at the start of Heretic, we're not statting that because it's a quarter staff. That's not not a whole lot else to say about it. Yeah, that doesn't do anything, right? You just pummel your your enemies, and then mm -hmm. um, that, that does it. Yeah, uh, but we'll start with the. A replacement for for the staff that is the gauntlets of the necromancer. Yeah, which, that's where fun begins. Yeah, 
For all intents and purposes, the gauntlets are Heretic's answer to the chainsaw. Um, you know, le leeching, he leeching, he leeching health off of enemies. It d it it only does the dr it only does the drain the drain effect if you have the tonal power on it. But um, I feel like that should I feel like if you were adapting this to against the Dark Master, it should use that by default. Yeah, I'm agree. I agree. Yeah. It, it also, I, I think I remember, it, it um, draw some enemies near, yeah? It, it just, it's like, like a sort of magnet, mm -hmm. so they, it, it holds them in some way. Yeah. Oh, well, it, it hold it mainly holds them because it's stun-locking. I do, th I do think, yeah. so, when it comes to the... How would you when it comes? How would you how would you um, interpret the whole um, have, having it having it stun locking enemies? I I probably have the the enemy mm -hmm. have to pass a save throw saving roll to to avoid being stunned by 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 the by the attack. And that that I can I can certainly go with. Um, now, when it comes to, now, the the next one that I have on the I have on the list is the Elven Wand, which in in Heretic it was the answer to the pistol and is a is a essentially a low damage hit scan. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically. I think it's. One of the first uh, weapons uh, uh, you get, possibly even before the gauntlet. I don't, I don't remember really. Yeah, I, you, I, start, you I, start out with you start out with the staff and the wand before. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. Well, that mm, I can I can see that that's. Mm, it, I, I will be tempted to make. Um, I mean, the, the temptation is to to make it just uh, plain wands, no? A wand of like uh, thunderbolts, so it's the second level, second wave spell. So I think, it, I, it I think fit. That might be pushing it a little bit too much because the whole thing is yeah, like, it's hit, is that hit scans automatically hit what, whatever they're pointed at, but they don't do a whole lot of damage. Yeah, that that that's what what I was. Getting out, but if I remember correctly, yeah, it, it didn't do very much. It took forever, even to kill those um, sort of gargoyles that we are the the basic and basic enemies. So, I think I would treat it as basically uh, a sort of weak uh, short bow. So it has a, it has a very it attacks on the Missile attack tables basically, with um, with a with a bonus to the to hit roll possibly. I I can I can see that although I I probably I probably make one other caveat that um you can that you can't crit with it. Oh yeah, that that's yeah that that that's uh. Yeah, so it could. Yeah, you know what? It could be. You you it could um, attack on another table, table like the like the unarmed table or the blunt table, and have a very low cap. Okay. So it 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 never it never crits. Only does does uh, damage, and maybe has a very 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 high bonus to to attack. So. It's very easy to to hit something with it, but it's never that great. Yeah. Um, next is the ethereal crossbow, one of one of the go one of the go tos. I, in most of my runs with Heretic, I never ran out of ammo for the thing, especially if you're playing on higher difficulties, where every pickup gives you fifty percent more ammo. But it all but it also means that there again means that there's more enemies and that they throw things faster. Um, but the ethereal crossbow, even though it's technically a crossbow, in practice, it's more like a shotgun. 
Yeah, yes, it is. it's the it is the Scott guy kind of of accent as here. Now, crossbows are, crossbows are are a mainstay when it when it comes to when it comes to fantasy fiction. But a lot of times, it's a it's a single shot, and then you have to and you have to crank the thing back, which is um, <laughs> easier said than done. Speaking from experience. Yeah. Even even if you even if you use a even if you use a crank and stuff and the more modern ones, it still it still feels kind of awkward. So, and whereas well, the, the big thing I um uh, of the crossbow is that it's basically a, a repeating magical crossbow. No, you, you I, I, um. As long as you have uh, arrows, darts for for it, you, you can shoot it uh, without reloading, as you per se. Yeah. Um, so how how would you rep how would you replicate the whole spread effect of of it to, of it to be shotgun adjacent? <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Mm. It would be probably like a cone attack. No. I don't remember if it had uh, a big range. I think it it had a stronger bolt, right? The one right in the middle, mm -hmm. that, uh, I think, was a bit stronger than the others. But uh, probably trying to replicate that is going... I mean, just not worth it. Uh, so I think it... I'd I'd handle it like a, a cone attack. Basically, it it's everything in a in a small cone, like like a three meters wide cone, cone or something like that. I'd I'd say I'd say that I'd say that would be apropos. Um. Uh, and the other thing is, it's um, it will it will obviously do a deal, like possibly. Lighting critical instead of plain uh, pierce critical like a, a common crossbow world. Mm -hmm. So it will be obviously capable of fitting like things like ghosts uh, or incorporeal and that. Yeah, I can, I can see, I can see that. Um... Because I, I remember there were uh, these, you know, in Exxon, there were some enemies that were like, um, you know, half, half there, were basically ghosts enemies. Um, mm -hmm. I think you could, you could do some damage to them with, with, this, with the crossbow. Yeah. Um, the ne The next one that I have is the Dragon Claw. Which, it, which was a, um, is a, it is a decent, um, a decent, ra a decent bit of, ra a bit of rapid fire hit, rapid fire hit scan, who, who's on um, sound effect I was never fond of. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, ha but it has a much, it has a much higher, um, rate, it has a much higher rate of fire. Yes. Yeah. Uh I don't remember what was the you know the the charged um, attack of that. If it does, because I feel the um, uh, you know the just having it as a as a fast shooting wand isn't really that interesting because each its hit didn't do. A uh, lot of damage, if I remember correctly. It was very good just because it, it shoot uh, fast. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Ah, oh, wow. Oh, I never realized it's a gauntlet. Ah, oh, it's, yeah. so, it's so. Yeah, I just realized that this. Although, given that given that it's a gauntlet, I'd 
item. I'd say I'd say that it would that it, that when it comes to calculating damage for the thing, we'd probably be using electricity. Counterbolts each round against your your enemies. Yeah, I can I can, cer I can certainly go with that. Um, but yeah, I I think I think I think when it was powered, it just it if I recall correctly, it, it just boosted your um, fire rate. At of course, oh, it was okay, gonna, yeah, of course, yeah. it was going to be eat, it was going to be eating through your ammo, but sti but still. Mm -hmm. Um. Next is the hell staff, which, if which um, the the hell the hell staff has a, has a bit more in common with the plasma rifle from from um, Doom Two, from Doom and Do from Doom and Doom Two. What am I saying? Um, it just just has a much bigger sprite than the plasma rifle did in Doom, but. It's a stiff, but beside that, it was your it was your pew pew and the um, tone and the ver the um, powered up version with the tone um, let you do let you do essentially a a energy rain over over a short over a short area. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was cool. Yeah, even the 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 look of a weapon. Well, that's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think that could be just like an area attack, you know, yeah. if you, in, uh, with, with a very cool uh, looking uh, do uh, damage in, uh, you know, in, in uh, X meter meters area. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that. That's just it. I, I want to say that this is probably a weapon that would be uh, fit better in the hands of a servant of a dark master. So it's, it would probably do, you know, dark magic critical strikes. Um, would you have? Would you have it be a cursed item? Uh, I don't know yet. I, I, I'm tempted to say. Yes, even though in uh, Heretic didn't have any uh, drawback, but I think uh, more than cursed, I think that um, heroes relying too much on it could become, you know, corrupted possibly. So yeah, I, I'd give it some, you know, some sort of dark intelligence of some sort. Um. I'm mainly, I'm mainly thinking just put just putting a beacon effect, i.e., i.e., using it is going to is going to draw his servants to you. Yeah, yeah, that's that that would be perfect. I think. Yeah, I like that. It would certainly fit. What happens to what happens to Corvus at the at the start of the ex, at the start of the expansion for Heretic um, Shadow of the Serpent Riders, mm -hmm. which um. Is what is what ha is what happens when someone decides to take a heretic and throw in a little bit of the plutonia experiment? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Next is the phoenix rod, which the um. I think the I think the phoenix rod would be would be a, would be far. Um, would be far sim would be far sim one of the simpler entries in this because the default version is throwing is doing um is doing fireballs that do that do splash damage a la a rocket and its power yeah. up version is a short range flamethrower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's basically a uh, uh, staff of a uh, of like a fireball mm -hmm. uh, and possibly. Yeah, I, I think you you, you could uh, it, it, sh should you want to 
Uh, this is the, the last weapon you get, right? In, second, in Heretic. Second last. So you will probably want to make it uh, quite powerful. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think you it will just let you cast fireball at will, basically. Um, the the last one, which is supposed to be the BFG of the game, although in context it, it really isn't, is the fire mace. Um, basically, a mace that th- that throws um, that throws metal balls, where every tenth one does triple damage, and it's okay. Yeah, and throws giant yeah, yeah. balls that bounce around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was kind of disappointing. In, in the look, you know, when you when you find that, but I remember it being relatively useful, particularly against you know the, the big guys. The uh, it can be it can be useful against some against some of the bigger guys. The big pro- the big problem is um, Heretic has the, has this whole thing between between physical and magical attacks, and ghost enemies can't be hit with physical ones, which is yeah. And at high and at higher difficulties and on the expansion, um, it, if it if if the game can replace a normal enemy with a ghost version of it, it will. <laughs> yeah. Or and of course, of course, even worse, you could be dealing with iron liches. I hate iron liches. Yeah, yeah, the, the giant version worked against them, mm-hmm. so right? Yeah. Or it did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you just had to deal with that tornado bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were a pain in the ass. Yeah. Mm. Oh. But that. that... I, I ca- Go ahead. No, I, I think I, I kind of feel this is probably one of the least interesting weapons to to convert, right? Because it's basically just a arranged mace. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't do really anything uh, particularly spectacular. You know the the phoenix road is much more, uh, yeah, no, I, mm, fuller mm. in in that sense. Uh, so yeah, that is, is, I would treat this possibly like a, a, a regular uh, enchanted maze mm. that could also uh, do range. Attacks, which which could be quite handy, you know, for for a warrior, but possibly not not the uh, the greatest deep weapon you you'll ever find. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when it comes to Now, when it comes to the items, I only, I only, I only, I didn't go through all of the items. In fact, I only listed five of them. Um, first one, first one is fair. First one is fairly uh, is a fair, uh, I think, a fairly straightforward entry, and that's the shadow sphere. Um, just which just makes you invisible for for a few for a few set for I think around thirty seconds. Um, it can. <laughs> I'd say I'd say in order to make in order to make it not too powerful, I'd say I'd say that when it comes to the sh- when it comes to utilizing this, you'd probably be invisible for for one minute, but or rather or rather, I won't I won't say invisible is more more than for for about one for about one minute, um, physical attacks automatically miss. Yeah, that, that that sounds right. That sounds good. Magical attacks, however, they're still they're still gonna hit you. Mm-hmm. Um, the real tr- the real tricky one to to do in this regard would be 
the tome of power. Like, how, how are you going to make that not bro not um, broken? <laughs> well, I, I, in a sense, in a sense, I think it, it should be broken. I mean, it should be like a, like a really powerful artifact like almost an item of power with its own its own will and the grand well it did talk in so I, too so you're not far off so i'll make it uh, rather than because uh, it, it just boosts your attack right in the in the game while i'd I, i'd probably have it grant some very powerful uh, either magic or um, grant you uh, a big bonus to all your <clears throat> all your stats while you're using it uh, as long as you do uh, what what it wants basically yeah um I think as far as what it wants um, is the is the is eradicate is eradication of demons. Yes. Um, this might be this might be pushing <coughs> a little bit. But Sorry. One, but one thing I'm considering is that for, is that while while it's active for let's say fifteen seconds, um, I know it's forty seconds in the game, but I, but given this effect, I think that might be pushing it a little bit. And for all intents and purposes, that's still three. That's still three combat turns. Um, anytime you, anytime you would roll, anytime you would naturally roll less a seventy-four or less on the on the D one on the D one hundred, it's treated as you rolled a seventy-five. Yeah, that, that's hmm, that seems reasonable. I think you you could also push it uh, even farther, right, and, and uh, uh, have it, um, you know, uh, letting you automatically roll, uh, li like you just rolled uh, a open-ended uh, uh, double zero, basically. So you automatically get the max result on a, on a roll. So in yeah. Other, in other words, in other words, your 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 attacks and damage would get a would get an open ended roll for free. Yes, but maybe maybe I'll have some kind of uh, drawback to this. So you 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 can use can use it this way, but only you know by sacrificing something or by accepting some kind of heavy drawback. I get, so I it's think, not something. I think a, I think a, I think the a sufficient drawback that a GM could use is that it only works on something that the tome has considered a considered a um, suf, a sufficient threat. Yeah. So if you, yeah, try use the thing, if you try and use the thing on bandits, the tome's gonna say say no. You use the thing on on gar, use the thing on say gar, on say gargoyles or. Um, high or higher tier, higher tier um, servants of the Dark Master, and then then it's then it's probably going to say yes. Yeah, yeah. And as as I said, I, I see this as a an item of power, so it will probably try to direct you toward this this enemy. This uh, so it you know it's not going to be the safest thing to carry around. Mm -hmm. I I get I get that. Now, when now when it comes to now the next one that I have on my I have on the list is the ring of invulnerability, which. I will admit I I will admit I use this thing, which is basically just invincibility for a few short seconds, as a, as a means to um bear, means to barrel through some areas that were that were that had weight that had way too many projectiles.
but well, that's, that's a tent with spells, spell in in Dark Master, which is called True Believer, that uh, makes you immune to damage and critical strikes for one round. So the ring, I think, could just make me that. You use it, and for one round, you are immune to damage and you don't suffer critical strikes. Which is also, mm -hmm. uh, if you are going to do something very brave and or stupid, and can obviously save your uh, save your life, mm -hmm. but you, I, I mean, you just got one round. So <laughs> better make it count. Yep. Um, next is the wings of wrath. Which in game just get just gave you the ability to fly. Um, although of course you couldn't take it between levels because the because the devs didn't want you to sequence break. <laughs> um, well, fl flying is actually quite a powerful ability in in Dark Master. It's not very uh, it's not very common, and it's. Also, uh, you know, spells that run flights are quite high in the wave. I think I think the first spell that let you actually fly, not just levitate, is like seventh wheel, seventh wave. So uh, you're gonna be pretty high level when are able to cast that. Yeah, but. I'd I'd say I'd say the I'd say when it comes to the when it comes to the wings you have you have that you have that le you have that level of flight but you but but you're but you only have if you you only can make you only can have the ability to turn the thing off and on once you activate it for twenty four hours. Yeah. So you you got um. Sort of countdown, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Oh, the last one is another is another perpetual disappointment in game, and it is the time bomb of the ancients. Which... Okay, yeah, I remember that. Basically, cleared an area, right? Um, it did it. It was their it was their attempt at trying at trying to introduce a grenade into the into the Doom engine. Um, it didn't really work. Because the, the thing is it would it would either take too long to det you would either be in a situation where it would take too long to detonate and this in a game all about speed, or it just or it just wouldn't do enough damage. Yeah. I but I mean the the idea was that basically. Mm -hmm. I think I think a I think a bit I think the best approach is 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 sim is simply to treat it as the ma as the magical equivalent of a grenade with prop with probably a bigger splash damage than than what was shown in game. Yeah, I think I I will give you a very a pretty high damage, just to because I think that mm, the idea of the depth there was to have was for it to be a very powerful weapon. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, I, I like the idea right, of being, uh, you know, kind of sort of a delight uh, fireball, you know. So yeah, it gives you like one round to 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 clear to clear uh, to clear out of the room before it explodes, mm -hmm. something like that. Oh. Now th that now when it came to Heretic Two, um, the interest the that was. Which ones I was going to pick were were kind of tricky because of the fact that 
you only have four total weapons, so you have a lot of you have a lot of different um, attack patterns with them because um, Heretic Two is kind of a I consider it kind of a dry run for what they would eventually do with um, Je with Jedi Outcast. Mm. But the, but there were there were two um, there were two we there were two we weapons that I decided that I decided to that I decided to go with because we already we already because the main staff is there although it's dual although it's double bladed now but not 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 much reason to go to go with it and we already covered the hell staff. So the the other two that I decided to go with were the storm bow and the phoenix bow. The storm the um the storm bow um explodes on contact. It it does explode on contact and causes a burst of acid rain and lightning around the target. Okay. Um, if, if the tome version of it that um, does does a lot more AOE, but also has it where the um, the tar the target that got hit by the ass that that's getting hit by the acid rain gets trapped, so they can't just mm. move out of the AOE. It keep it keeps following them. It turns it turns the AOE until it into a damaging aura. Okay. Yeah, well, this is, well, some, um, surely something that does, uh, you know, lighten damage. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you could have this as a, a magical bow that can, that has the power of releasing, um, uh, uh, sort of a uh, lightning bowl attack mm -hmm. once in a while you know you, you can shoot normal arrow with it but you can then charge it and release this big uh, area attack that does lightning damage yep. um, and as i as i look further when it comes to the phoenix bow i i realize that um, that would basically be doing the same thing that the phoenix rod does minus the flamethrower it's just doing exploding mm. arrows, so I can so we can skip that one. Then we get yes. yeah. then we get to the cr the crazy stuff the crazy stuff when it comes to a medieval. Um, okay, I, I even plead a medieval, so yeah, yeah, I have to rely on your description. Uh, some of the descriptions are going are going to come from the are going to come from the in game codex. So we'll start with the start. We'll start with the well starting weapon, the axe of the black labyrinth. Okay. Described as a weapon created by the old gods themselves, it has belonged to many great warriors and heroes. It senses evil and, at a short distance, will pull anything that it hates toward it. Also key to traversing dimensions, its full powers are unknown. It always returns to the black labyrinth once the wielder is dead. Well, that's super cool to begin with. Um, well, I think this, well, this is clearly a very powerful item, a magical hex, and... <clears throat> I'm, send, I'm sending you, an, I'm sending you the um, pickup image. Okay, yeah, well, wow, that's, okay, that's really cool. Uh, I like the fact that it draws enemies to you, so... A, it's kind of like a, an offensive teleport ability, right? So I, I'd say that it basically grants you the power of uh, pulling a target enemy who fails their save role to you. Yeah, you know, like once, once per scene, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I also like the the fact that it's supposed to help you traveling through dimension so it might 
actually have the power of you know you you, you could set, up, set it up so that there are certain places where the uh, boundaries between realities are thinner than normal and you could use this axe on those spot to like you open a, a rip in the fabric of reality that will let you basically teleport from one place to the other. Um, so ne next is the Staff of the Azure Orb. Mm -hmm. Which is described as the great wizards of the Azure Order cr crafted a perfect orb representing all they stood for, purity and balance, containing facets of their combined powers. Normally it fires seeking, seeking magic orbs. When powered, it unleashes a torrent of magic that will turn enemies to water. Very cool. Um, In um, It should... It, the um this particular one it doesn't do as much damage as the axe but because of the fact that it tracks it it has that it has that advantage for it so it's great for flyers okay well that's i think this could be similar to you know the stuff of uh, the axe stuff as something that doesn't do uh, a lot of damage but it has a bonus to hit, or it could we could also uh, you know take it further and uh, give it a, a strike bonus to it flying creatures, or even uh, instead of having a bonus, a fixed bonus. Uh, the fact that it tracks, it may uh, let you. Ignore uh, cover for for the creatures you're uh, trying to trying to hit. So mm -hmm. it can basically uh, go around obstacles and uh, and shields and things like that. Yep. Um. Next is is one is one of the is one of the work is one of the workhorse entries. The Whisper's Edge. Describe the, the description goes, The celestial wor worshippers created this weapon in secret. There are many similar swords, but the, but the pure green energy of the Whisper's Edge tears through those who would stand in its way. The projectile it fires will strike multiple enemies if hit, on, if hit on the sides. A direct hit deals more damage. The sword is swung and it, and it fires a arc of green energy. If it's powered, the okay. arc will, uh, and that arc will go, will go, can go through more than one enemy. Um, if it's, if it's um, powered. Okay. So yeah, this is this is similar. I I remember that the the warrior I think in Hexen had a similar weapon, but mm -hmm. possibly the the last weapon, right? He had he had this the sword that that mm, you know. Uh, barred with green flames. This feels similar to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this will be like your uh, magical sword with a bonus to hit and the ability of basically creates creating um, wall of walls of fire, walls of green fire. Uh, as, I should you know, note that as, it as you, as you. I should note that it go, doesn't go. really create wall. Doesn't really create walls of energy. When you swing it, it creates yeah. that, the whole crescent arc kind of flying thing that you see that you've seen in plenty of manga over the years. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No. So it's probably going to be something more like uh, fireballs. Mm -hmm. So you you hit your your enemy and you can then release a fireball that pierces through so it did everything in its um, its wake so if there are multiple enemies aligned you can potentially hit them all all right 
Um, it's, and yeah, yeah. For for all intents and purposes, in game the Whisper's Edge acts as your acts as your um, shotgun. It's one of it's one of the workhorses. In fact, you, okay. you would think that you would think that the axe would be would be useless because it's your starting weapon. It really isn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, next is the Voltride, which um, a name like that could a name like that could kind of probably get, probably gives you a bit of a hint as, as to what it does. Um, it says a once common weapon. It was used by holy warriors in the lands of lightning to subdue their foes by keeping them in a state of shock. Once an enemy has been hit enough times, they will enter a state of overcharge. This state can only be held for a few moments or the body will accumulate too much energy and disperse, causing deadly chain lightning. Oh. So, yeah. It's a, tr it's a trident that fires lightning bolts. When it's, po when it's powered, it becomes a quake-style lightning gun. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I uh, I probably treat this as a trident, well, like sort of spear mm -hmm. attack uh, with attached uh, lightning critical strike. I, I like the fact that uh, in the district in the description it says that it uh, it charges as you hit the enemies. So I think that possibly we could make it that if you manage to score uh, something like a Grievous or a lethal critical strike against your enemies, it discharges uh, a lightning bolt after that. So it basically it's semi-sentient and feels, you know, when uh when you're winning when he he when from the weapon is winning and mm -hmm. it discharges the lightning ball so yep. i i can i can certainly go i can certainly go with that since if you end up if you end up um doing too doing too much damage to an enemy that that energy go does um the lightning will will go will go out of them and, and attack any attack nearby enemies yes and we've all had our fun with with putting chains on chains of chain of chain lightning, so <laughs> I don't see why not. Yes, it, and that's also something that uh, lightning critical strikes normally do in uh, in against the dark master. There are mm -hmm. quite a few results in the table that make basically the critical jump to another target nearby. Um, next is the Celestial Claw, okay. which, um, the Im the, which, um, says, created by the Archmage of Chaos, it pulls random planets from their position in time and space, then shrinks them down to a size so they can be launched at foes. When enough souls <laughs> have, been, have been gathered, their power enables the Claw enough that it might even fire a sun. Okay, that's in super awesome. In context, the Celestial Claw is your rocket launcher. It's just that you're firing planets. <laughs> yeah, that, that's... Miniaturized planets, obviously. They stay miniaturized even when they hit, but still. Uh, they explode right yeah, on yeah. contact, or they just okay. So yeah, uh, I think that this could be like some. It's very similar to the Phoenix Road, basically. In uh, uh, you know, besides the type of damage that it deals, mm -hmm. feels very similar to it in the end, and. We could still keep the uh, the fact that once in a while it fires a sun because it's that's super awesome. Mm -hmm. So possibly uh, when you roll like doubles on your on your attack rolls, you you'll have a much higher 
damage cap and two uh, fire criticals in addition to the normal ones. Mm -hmm. uh, next is one. Next is one of my favorites. The star. The star of torment. Which um, yeah. gameplay wise, the I think I think Sivy said it best when he said, "Imagine, imagine if the flat cannon from Quake." And the and the nail, not 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 from Quake. The flat cannon from Unreal and the nail gun from Quake hate fucked and had an equally hateful baby. <laughs> okay. Is what it base the star of whenever this the the um, shards on the star um get get flung up get flung out in a scatter in a scatter pattern and imp and impale whatever's in their way is how is how it works. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is probably at least we could use um, like an area attack to represent this, mm -hmm. and but I feel that this wouldn't really, uh, you know, completely cover it. So it instead of making a a normal attack. Uh, we could have that in, in the area the the weapon hits every creature will have to pass like a save roll or and depending on how successful it is or um, for how much it fails it will suffer damage and one or even multiple Critical strike, you know, piercing critical strike, so that uh, because they could be hit by several different shards at once. Yeah, I I can I can certainly I can certainly see that. Um, the last one, the weirdest looking one, and the one that ammo was very hard to come by, and it it basically is this game's BFG, the okay. Eternum. Okay, yeah. From the image, I can I can't really tell what's going on. <laughs> um, it says it says no one knows where this weapon of exceptional power came from. It's said to exist in many dimensions at the same time. The Eternum will fire a projectile a short distance before exploding and instantly hitting nearby enemies with beams of magic. When okay. powered, when powered, it fires a black hole. Nice. Yeah, so this is really basically the big backing up from from the right. And I think the charge power is is more interesting. And I think we could uh, because uh when you say it fires a black hole, I imagine it draw uh, enemies to it, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it it creates like a zone that deals damage and draws enemies into it. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that's mm, very D&D for tradition, you know? Mm -hmm. It has lots of powers and spells that move the enemies around the battlefield, mm -hmm. which was quite Cool, actually, I, I kind of liked it, yep. and uh, I think we could have something like this. You know that the when you, um, I don't think this should be a weapon that you can use freely. Uh, yeah. I think this should be something reserved for very dangerous situation, oh. and it should fire. Yeah, this uh, basically create its own. Uh, that continuously does damage to those inside, yeah. and 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 a bigger zone around it, and everyone inside the second zone must save each round or be drawn in the you know damage area. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's a couple there's a couple of things there's a couple of things I'm cons I'm considering with the with the with the Eternum. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll be, I'll, when I when I compare it to the the reason I compare it to the BFG is for is for one, it's a powerful weapon that you're not going to find a whole lot of ammo for, and two, with with its regular shot, it will it will fire it will fire a short distance and then launch and then launch a bunch of tracers that that automatically hit um, enemies within its radius. Much in the same way okay. that the BFG had, in Doom had forty, um, it would launch forty invisible tracers, which is why it was able to hit enemies that it technically didn't. Mm -hmm. um, I'd still. Oh. I'll go. Up. I'd say. I'd say. I'd say when it. I'd say when it comes to that. Um, the Eternum probably probably would do probably would would you say would you say it would it would do, it would it would go with the go with the idea that it's um it ro it it it, auto it automatically hits you you're just you're just um ro you're just rolling down the uh, when it comes to its basic attack it automatically hits you're just rolling for damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, one one other thing that I'm one other thing that I'm considering because of how strange the weapon the weapon's appearance is is to ha is to have it that it is technically an it is technically an item of power, but whenever uh, whenever but um, it's one of those it's an item of power that no, that is not. Full, is not fully understood exactly exactly what it is. It's too it's too alien. Um, mm -hmm. Like Howard ha Howard and um, and Love and Lovecraft were friends, and so and and sometimes Howard would take no, would take notes from sometimes the former would take notes from the latter, and that's yeah. kind of what I'm thinking in the sense that this is this is an this is an item of power, but. But trying to but trying to understand it is going to is going to is going to mess with is going to mess with your head. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I can see that. It's also for this kind of reason that I would I would say that the that the no, this would be that the dark master is is. Is not necessarily would not necessarily be drawn to it, but more driven to destroy it because it's something that he does. It's something that he wouldn't understand and doesn't know how to control. Mm -hmm. um, but when but both but all, but the three of us sorry not the three of us but we had both decided on go on on doing three. Weapon and three weapon um, entries from po from popular fiction. Um, unlike unlike with the le unlike with the previous attempt with with the album crawls, this is going to be significantly more free. This is significantly more free form. And I already got. I would would do you want to go with your three, or would you rather I go first? No, go. You go first. You go first, but. Um, I'm, I, I figure, I figure I should, I figure I should throw a, throw a bone to, to you with, an, with a relatively easy one at first. <laughs> so let's talk about the Emerald Sword. <laughs> yeah, that was thinking about that. Uh, what well, the thing is, I, I don't think, uh, the power of the sword are even really detailed in the albums, right? It's just some very powerful sword. Supposedly, it's it's able to kill. Um, the... There was there was once there was one song in Triumph and Agony that did give the backstory of the sword. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, name, Let me... name, namely during during. During one of the during one of the elvish during one of the elvish wars with them, uh, um, a a stone a 
a um, stone was used as a, as a means to as a means to uh, torture, in fact, torture the mm. the, the brother of the man who forged it. And okay, he he took it. He made a he made a sword out of it, and then and then asked it to asked it to be filled with might. I give I give it holy powers, and. Mm -hmm. When it and when it was used, the the description in the song is it was hell's last breath. I.e., he like he likely wiped out an, an entire army of demons with it. Okay, that sounds kind of really bad. And now I understand why we made such a big deal out of it. <laughs> okay, so well, that. Surely an item of power, mm -hmm. and obviously uh, the purpose of the sword is to, to slay a dark, I'd say dark creatures, not just demons, because it also, you know, works against the servant of the Dark Lord in general. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it will be super effective against demons, or it's probably demon slayer, and uh, you would also unlock more power as you uh, go on fulfilling basically the sword quest. Yeah, the the thing the thing the thing is the reason it was given the reason it was given to given off for sa for safekeeping and put and put through those amount of safeguards is. Um, is no is it's it up uh, it could be just as it could be dangerous it could be dangerous in the wrong hands whether that be man whether that be elf whether that be dwarf or whether that be a dark lord yeah um now i'm I'm torn. I'm torn between whether or not the appearance of the emerald sword should be a long sword or should be a great sword <laughs> uh, yeah, in, in, I mean, I think they took some artistic license on the covers to represent it. I feel it should be more a long sword. I mean, I I think it, you know, I don't know. It feels more feels more right to uh, being a long sword. I I can go, I can go with that. Um. When it come now, when it comes to when it comes to the the second one that I had, because I because I'm a massive Devil May Cry fan, is okay. the is the Sparta, the so, the sort okay. of the, sort of the Dark Knight of, of of who of who it also shares the name. And okay, okay. This is this. Uh, would be, this would be an interesting one because you effectively have a greatsword, a halberd, and a scythe all in one. Oh, together, yes. Uh, by the way, I believe it or not, but I have used Devil May Cry weapons. Uh, well, I think from the first Devil May Cry back. Back in the days in my games, I, I use them mm -hmm. as some, as a, you know, inspiration. So, yeah, I can totally get that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I did, I did the, you know, the gauntlets that, 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 you, have, that, that you found. Yeah, e -freed. But, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as for Sparta, mm -hmm. Well, uh, just just having the ability of changing, you know, the type of weapon is, is pretty big. You know, you you can choose as a, whichever weapon to use in its situation. Mm -hmm. uh, it will obviously have a quite a big bonus to to attack, and uh, given its Given its um, nature, it's absolutely intelligent, and I I don't think it's it's 
I don't think its uh, purposes should be uh, uh, you know should be quite dangerous to carry around mm -hmm. so this is possibly something that uh, you know some antagonist is looking for and the heroes may uh, want to hack us um, uh, to get to, to the sword before the big uh, evil guy uh, gets it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's more of, yeah, no, go. It's, it would def it would definitely be under, it would definitely fall under um, a more item of power kind of thing. Yes, yes. Possibly even for a dark, you know, uh, item of power. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I've there's been there's been there's been a fair there's been a fair amount of of um of weapon entries, but I I want to but I want to pick I want to pick your brain on 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 a, on a bit more of an armor thing and. I will admit that I'm, ma I'm mainly bringing this up as a bit of a tribute to the recent passing of Mira, but yeah. how? But how would you? How would you go with the um, Berserker armor? Uh, okay, well that's the uh, magical suit of armor, and I think the. Uh, it should definitely give you some bonus to your uh, battle frenzy skill, mm -hmm. as, as well as for your defense. And I will give you give it the power of uh, granting you a sort of reserve of temporary hits. So as long as you, uh, as long as the power is active, you have basically more hit points and possibly ignore the penalties of parts of the penalties you you get from, from the blows you receive. Mm -hmm. But the trick is that these hits and these penalties aren't gone. You just don't feel it. So you don't feel them. Mm -hmm. So when your when the powers first off, you are in for a for a lot of, a lot of pain and you're you're going to Probably seriously regret using it. Oh. I don't. There would, pro there would probably be the inevitable um, thing, thing regarding what regarding whether or not whether or not this sh whether or not this should be a a um, cursed item. I. I'm con I'm consider I'm considering yes, but not cursed in terms of being directly associated with the Dark Master kind of cursed. No, yeah, I think I think the just the fact that it, it makes you basically a berserker could be enough, basically. Mm -hmm. I'd say I'd say if any if anything caused I'd say. If I were to use it in against the Dark Master, the thing that would the thing that caused cause the curse is uh, the is the fact that so the fact that so many people have have put the have put the thing on and di and died in battle. Yeah. Um, but th those are those are my those are my three entries. What did what did you have in mind for your three? Okay. Yeah, for my three, I'll start with um, with something from a video game to get back to the, the first one we we did, and then thought of the Wappa Jack from my favorite uh, Elder Scrolls chapter, the Daggerfall. So the Wappa Jack basically was an artifact. From the Tedric Lord Yogorath, mm. Lord of Madness. And it's basically a quarter staff 
and every time it did something, it transformed it in a random creature. Mm -hmm. So you could hit like, you know, a, um, a vampire and turn it into a rat, or a rat and turn it into a, you know, fire elemental or a lich, if you are unlucky. It's mm -hmm. totally random. I really loved it when I played the game, even though obviously wasn't the best weapon to use. But mm -hmm. it was really fun. And it's also quite easy to port into any game. It's just uh, make it uh, magical stuff with a you know, small bonus to hit. And you make a uh, a, a random table and each time it did uh, a creature the creature saves and if it fails it gets turned into one of the creatures so, okay. so i i think it may have a seal uh, even in a regular mm -hmm. tabletop rpg and you know you got you're against the the dragon or a very powerful foe and nothing left, uh, you might as well use the, the Wabba Jack because it's can difficult. It will be turned in something worse, right? Mm -hmm. oh. So yeah, that, that 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 was my first basic. I prob I probably throw in that it's not necessarily cursed, but it does have quirks. Like say Yeah. Like say like if you remember if you remember the fact sphere from Portal Two that would rent that would randomly spit out facts that may or may may not be true. That's kinda what it does. It'll just spit the reason why you would the reason why you would want to not use it not use it all that often isn't be isn't because of the isn't because of it being too powerful or too dangerous. It's because it doesn't shut the hell up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could also probably have some uh, habits like uh, uh, you know teleporting in, into your hands or you know aha you, you you thought you were swinging with your soul but in truth you were holding a wapa jack all along because uh, that weapon basically it's a jerk you know it, it yeah. just wanted to, to mess up with you mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, okay, that, that was my first. My second one, it's from the movie Crawl. And I think as soon as you said, as I say that, you you know what I'm talking about today, about the uh, five point and uh, ridiculous star weapon, the yeah, glaive. The, the glaive. The glaive, yeah. Yeah, that's which is uh, when I was a kid and I first saw Kral, I thought it was awesome. And but obviously rewatching it now, it's just uh, ridiculous. But you know, that's some kind of nostalgia to it. And this is basically a range, a range weapon, range magical. Uh, I think. It, it it's not much the, the damage that it does. I'm looking normally to to do normal enemies I should do uh, like you know like a dagger or not much more damage, mm -hmm. and it should be much more effective against you know the servants of the dark. And I think if I remember correctly. The, the hero can can control it with, with his mind one once the glaive uh once 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 he throw with it mm -hmm. so uh, so it yeah basically I think it's uh, a troll weapon that can hit uh, any creature and I think it also had some protective qualities I think I think uh, it 
I think the the hero could even you know parry like lasers and magical attacks. Mm -hmm. So it will probably give you some balance to your defense or save rolls. And obviously, it will be uh, slaying for for uh, for dark creatures. And it could even be uh, like in the movie. It could be even be the the actual weakness of the of the dark master. You could have a a whole campaign on retrieving the clave, finding it, passing various tests. Mm -hmm. And then go on and kill the Dark Master with it. Yeah. Um, I could... I could... Because of the fact because of the fact that it's... Uh, that the blades on the thing are essentially locked, I could, I could see some... Uh, some, u some use out of that. Um... So what with that with that in mind, what's your um with give I'd say I'd say um I'd say you could I'd I'd say you could probably you could um you could probably treat it as a as a holy sim as a holy symbol of for for certain kinds of foci. Yeah, definitely, yes. Uh, but when when it comes to the like now, when it comes to your third entry, what what did you have in mind for that? Okay, my third entry, I chose a um, defensive item too for uh, for this one, for this last one, mm -hmm. and uh, I chose the shield of Perseus. So from Greek mythology. You know, Perseus is the one who killed Medusa. Yep. And he was able to do this because he had this magic shield that I think Athena usually is, is the one giving out magic items to people. So uh, Athena gave him. And, well, it's, it's, uh, it was, mm, wasn't actually a magic shield. It was just a shield that was so polished he could uh, reflect the, the uh, Medusa's gates back, basically, or could watch Medusa through it without being petrified. Yeah. But the cool stuff is that uh, after killing Medusa, Perseus basically attaches uh, Medusa's head to the shield, right? And, and so it becomes an incredibly powerful weapon because it just holds shield up and it can uh, it can petrify people mm -hmm. I think yeah. yeah and I think that this would um, that this will also be a quite uh, a nice adventure to uh, the book in Dark Master or even in Dungeons and Dragons in other in other games, I like the fact that uh, the hero, you know, finds or is given a magical weapon or shield in this case, and then he can upgrade it. But to do so, it's a, it doesn't, you know, go to the magic shop and buy like a plus two shield instead of plus one. But yeah, you know, it, it goes to a mythical enemy, it kills it. And then, you know, it's granted some power from from killing it. It takes one of the enemies' attack. This is something really cool that I think should be done uh, more often in in games. You know, I, re uh, I remember re I remember going through Scion First Edition. I ha I haven't touched Second Edition from um, okay. White Wolf. And in the bestiary entry, there with each with each with each uh, with each of the major creatures in that, um, there there was there was a section called trophy, i.e. Mm -hmm. what i.e. what you could um what you could salvage and how you could potentially use 
use it from that from that particular um, enemy. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's cool. I mean, uh, it's something that. Uh, Right, it's it's basically it's a magical uh, treasure, right? But it's done in in a way that's very flavorful, and instead of giving you you know like the a plus X magical armor when you defeat the dragon, you know you you do like Siegfried, you you kill the dragon, you bait in its blood, and you become invulnerable, and that's that's basically a, a, a magic item. Mm-hmm. But uh, with so much, so more flavor uh, than what's normally uh, done in most uh, adventures. So I think I, I, I'd like to see more of that. And that's why I chosen Perseus with the, with the Medusa help. Mm-hmm. And hey, hey, it'd be hey, it'd be easier than it'd be easier than dealing with Castlevania style Medusa heads. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not salty. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. But with something like that, I could, I could see it. There's um, there's two way, there's two ways that I'd that I'd want that I'd want to go with it. The um, as far as as far as the traditional Aegis that that happens later. That's that's one route, but that but that route's aren't aren't even done. What I find more interesting in that regard is the is the shield is the reflective shield, um, having the ability to reflect. Going a little bit further with that and having that give the ability to reflect or deflect magic. Yes, yes, I can see that. Yeah, it kind of reflects. You know, the weeds are cast a fireball at you, and you just shoot it back. At the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. And and that's also, uh, you know, classic. Uh, uh, you know, from uh, all sort of cinematic heroes. Do yeah. that. I'd go. I'd go with the reason I'm go, the reason I'd go with that is because you have is because you have a lot more potential for um, for a multi-purpose thing rather than rather than something that's going to do one or two things exclusively. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I like it. Mm-hmm. But you can even go and be a, uh, you know, uh, develop the shield as, as a weapon and make it your primary weapon, you know, you know shield bash and then reflect magical attacks and, you know, all, all your uh, warrior around it. Yeah, or if or if somebody wants to go even further down the down the um, down the crazy train, um, just get just give it a chain attachment and go full Rygar with it. Yeah, right. Uh, so with that said, I do I do want to thank you once again, one, as always, for for coming back to the temple to indulge me in this crazy little idea. My pleasure, man. And. Anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say Thank around you. here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Thank you, Mildra. Mm-hmm. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come to come on by and, and enjoy the madness. Sorry, but apologies for the technical issues midway through, but it is what it is. And there will be plenty more. There will be plenty more in Sandy where that where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody.